statue right there in this <laughs> she used to say sorry about that. I was <laughs> she used to come out and say I was old as dirt. <laughs> and I put a stop to that. I didn't hear, but the dirt outside didn't like it. <laughs> I have been here a long time. I made my first guest appearance on this stage in October 1950. And then I started as a regular here in uh, 19, January 1952. And this has been home to me uh, in a roundabout way. I met my wife here. Me and her just celebrated our 62nd wedding anniversary. I guess you'd call it a celebration, I don't know. We were laying there in bed and I was about to drop off sleep, and I heard her say, if this was 10 years ago, you'd be holding my hand. So I thought, what the heck, I reached over and got her by the thumb. <laughs> Played there a little while, and I heard her say, if this was 20 years ago, you'd be kissing me on my cheek. So I scooted over there and slobbered on her jaw a little bit. <laughs> I was about to drop off sleep again, and I heard her say, if this was 30 years ago, you'd be biting me on my neck. <laughs> when I got out of that bed, I've never seen a woman get in the shape she got in. Screaming, yelling, calling me names. All I was doing was getting up to get my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, uh, I, really, uh, I really feel at home here. But I'm in trouble today. My grandson, I, I got mixed up on my date, and my grandson, I had promised him, me and him, would go up today, uh, today and see the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, that big ship up there in the north? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's right. And when I found out that I, had to be here. Well, I went by his house and told him I was coming to Renfro Valley, and he, I didn't know he wanted to see Noah's Ark as bad as he did. He tried every way in the world to talk me out of coming here. I tried to reason with him. Finally, I just had to come right out and say, no, I'm going to Renfro Valley. And <laughs> I left there, he jumped over behind the couch and left him squalling and bawling. <laughs> His wife said she'd never seen him act like that. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want to get him mad at me because he's the one that now is teaching me how to use the cell phone and the TV remote. <laughs> and I've got both of them. Now, if you call me on the cell phone, I'll answer it, but I hardly ever make a call on it. But the, but the other day, I was out at the grocery store, and I saw a fellow back, back there that if there's anybody in this whole world I don't like, it's him. He thinks he knows everything in the world, thinks he's smarter than anybody. And I knew that he knew that I'm from the same hometown as, uh, as our Governor Bashir's, ex-Governor Bashir's is from. And so I thought, well, I'll pull one on him. So I walked over there where he could hear me, and I reached in my pocket to get my phone, and I put it up like this, and I said, Governor Bashirs, this is Pete Stamper. Uh, you said not too long ago you was coming down to Renfro Valley sometime. We haven't seen you. Yeah, yeah, I know you're busy. And while I was talking, this fellow walked over and whispered in his ear, says, what's your favorite TV show? And I thought, why in the world did he ask a stupid question like that? I tried to figure it out on, all the way home. Got home, I found yeah, out. On the coffee table was my cell phone. I was talking <laughs> on the TV remote. The United States has the law about texting. And you know, I don't see how anybody does that. I really don't. And drive. I can't do it from the couch. <laughs> of course,
course, I know there is people that can do most anything. Back where I'm from, we had a woman years ago drove a convertible, and she would, she not text, they didn't have phones in, but she would knit, knit and drive. And I don't reckon it was a law against that because nobody ever tried to stop her. She would knit and drive. I guess one day she was speeding maybe, and police pulled in behind her and flashed his lights on. She didn't stop. She just kept a driving and a knitting. Turned his uh, siren on. She still didn't stop. Just kept a driving and a knitting. He pulled up on the side of her, took his bullhorn, said, pull over. She said, no, it's going to be a button up. <laughs>